welcome students i welcome all of you once again to my session so in the last lecture we had started lesson number 12 food for all do you remember what we had learned in the last lecture shall we revise once again let's revise in the last lecture we learned that there are total 3 seasons which exist in india what are those 3 season kharif season rabi season and summer season so these three season exist in india so can you tell me the definition of all the three can you say the definition along with me so let's revise the definition once again so the season which starts from june to october we call it as what kharif season okay what is the meaning of the rabi season the season which starts from october to march we call it as what rabi season okay what is the meaning of the summer season the season which starts from march to june we call it as what summer season i hope so now you understood all the three definitions in detail and you all know that day by day population of our country it is increasing so as a population is increasing day by day the demand of the food it is also increasing day by day then who is providing us all the food which is required what is your answer yes exactly who is providing us food farmers who are providing us food farmer so as the population is increasing the need of all the people are being made because of improved methods of the agriculture do you know these farmers they are learning new new techniques so that they can get the good harvest okay so every farmer wishes to get the good harvest what do you mean by good harvest good harvest means crop of good quality now what is the meaning of crop of good quality that crop which is not at all damaged and that crop should be rich in the nutrition so the crop which is rich in the nutrition which is not at all damaged it is called as what good harvest and if the crop it is in the good condition then only people will buy it no so therefore if the crop is of good quality then only the farmer will get income am i right so in order to get the good income the farmer wishes to get the good harvest are you getting my point over here now you must be thinking how we can get the good harvest what is essential for the good harvest any guesses what you students feel what are the materials which we are supposed to provide to the agricultural field so that we can get the good crop any guesses yeah the first of all we need to provide what water water is most important phenomenon no if we don't provide the water then crop won't be able to grow in the dry condition we can't grow crop or any kind of the plant also so the water is most important factor for all kind of the living organism so water is life okay so even to get us the good harvest water is very important along with water what is the most important thing which we require to get the good harvest fertile land what we require fertile land just imagine that if there is no fertile land will be able to grow the crop in that field no can we grow the crop anywhere like that only can we grow the crops on the concrete roads no so in order to get the crop of good quality we need to find out the fertile land did you understand now 
and the most importantly the next criteria which we require that is good quality of seeds if the seeds are of good quality then only we will get the crop of good quality imagine if the seeds are of not good quality if the seeds got the fungal infection and suppose if the same seed if we sow into the soil then we won't get the crop of good quality so that's why if we want the crop of good quality then we have to make sure that seeds are of also good quality okay because seeds are the baby of the plant so if the seeds are in the good condition then automatically we will also get the crop of good condition okay and the most importantly the next thing is fertilizers fertilizers are very important to provide nutrients to the soil okay usually we put the fertilizer into the soil why we put the fertilizer into the soil so if we put the fertilizers into the soil soil will get the nutrition and the nutrition which are present inside the soil that will be absorbed by the plant and the plant will get the good harvest okay so what we had learned so far what is essential for the good harvest fertile land good quality of seeds fertilizers and availability of water so these are the four factor which are important for what good harvest and do you know that as we say traditional agricultural method is very essential since the ancient time our farmers are using the traditional agricultural method so what were the method were used by the farmer for the traditional agricultural method so basically in the traditional agricultural method plowing and tilling etc were done with the help of what oxen okay so what is the meaning of the plowing have you seen the plowing have you ever visited village so in villages you must have seen such kind of scenario so you must have seen that farmers does the plowing with the help of the oxen so with the when we do the plowing that time the soil get replaced the soil get parted so when get soil divided into small small partition so in that small partition we can sow the seed for growing the our required crop okay so this plowing technique is actually used by the farmers in the traditional method but right now farmers are using the modern techniques for growing the crops okay and one more traditional technique which was used by the farmer for drawing the water from the well that is a mot you can see that here in this diagram a mot is a huge leather bag driven with the help of the oxen which was used to draw the water from the well so from the well farmers used to remove the water and they used to provide the water from the well to the all the crops in the field so it was not easy to remove the water continuously with the help of hand so that's why they had used the mot to remove the water okay because you all know that if all crops are provided with the water at the right time then only the crops will be able to grow proper, properly if we don't provide water at the right time then crops won't be able to grow when we feel thirsty that time we want water no exactly in the same manner even the crops require water okay so if we provide water at the correct time then only the crops will be able to grow okay so what are the sources from we can get the water to provide the crop so you know that water from rivers lakes and well it is used for irrigation in addition to the rain water of course rain water provides us water but the rainy season here in india it just lasts for 4 month then what after 4 month 
so when rainy season will be here that time the rain water it will provide water to the agricultural field but what after the rainy season so after rainy season these rivers lakes and wells they are the sources of the water okay and greater quantities of the water sometime it is stored by the building of the dams also you must have seen the dams also at some region the dams are constructed so that the water can be used so the flowing water it is stopped at the particular time so that that water can be used for the agricultural method okay so students you know that initially the crops were watered with the help of the canals okay canal means the small channels which were made in the agricultural field so that the water could be provided to the crops but do you know there was one disadvantage with the canals what was the disadvantage with the canals however much water from the canal is lost due to evaporation and seepage into the ground what is the meaning of the evaporation evaporation means the conversion of liquid water into the water vapor okay what is the meaning of evaporation when water gets converted into the water vapor when water gets converted into the water vapor then this process is called as what evaporation what we call it as evaporation now did you understand so you know when the water was provided with the help of the canal snow so large amount of the water it got evaporated in the form of water vapor that means the loss of the water occurred over here and the most of the extra water it went down inside the soil so when extra water it goes down inside the soil this process we call it as what seepage into the ground okay so which are the two modes from where the water got lost it evaporation and seepage so because of the evaporation and because of the seepage most of the water got lost so now you must be thinking we have to find out some alternative so that we can avoid the loss of the water so do you know that now improved methods of the irrigation are used what are those improved method of irrigation to provide the water so there are basically two modern method of irrigation are widely used by all the farmers and those two method of the irrigation are drip irrigation and sprinkle irrigation which are those technique drip irrigation and sprinkle irrigation what is the meaning of the drip irrigation drip irrigation means the water is provided to the crops through the pipes can you see here the diagram what diagram you can see here there is one small plant sapling near that you can see the pipe and that pipe it is provided with the hole so do you know through that hole the water will directly fall on to the plant drop by drop so here the wastage of the water is avoided can you see the extra pipes here so these extra pipes are supplied near the each crop so near the each crop the each pipe is made with the hole so that the water can be supplied by drop by drop so in the drip irrigation method it makes the use of the pipes with the holes okay so what is the advantage of the drip irrigation method this method ensures that the required amount of water drips only near the plants that means what whatever required amount of water it is there it will directly fall near the plant okay thus full use is made of the available water full use of water is made which was available 
सो नाउ वॉट वी हैड सीन ड्रिप इरीगेशन मेथड वी हैड सीन डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द ड्रिप इरीगेशन डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द ड्रिप इरीगेशन कैन यू सी द डायग्राम ओवर हियर वॉट इज प्रोवाइडेड इन द ड्रिप इरीगेशन पाइप्स एंड दोज पाइप्स आर मेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ द होल्स सो दैट द वॉटर विल फॉल ड्रॉप बाय ड्रॉप ऑन टू द डायरेक्टली प्लांट्स ओके सो द ड्रिप इरीगेशन मेथड मेक्स द यूज ऑफ पाइप्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ होल्स डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ ड्रिप इरीगेशन ओके एंड आफ्टर ड्रिप इरीगेशन द नेक्स्ट थिंग विच वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न दैट इज स्प्रिंकल इरीगेशन वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न स्प्रिंकल इरीगेशन कैन यू सी द डायग्राम ऑफ द स्प्रिंकल इरीगेशन इजेंट इट लुकिंग लाइक सम वॉट फाउंटेन सो इट इज लुकिंग एग्जैक्टली लाइक द फाउंटेन वेर द वॉटर इट इज स्प्रिंकलिंग एवरीवेर ओके सो एज इट इज सम वॉट लुकिंग लाइक द फाउंटेन this pipe it is situated mostly at certain center of the field or maybe at some distance okay so the water will be sprinkled directly onto the crops okay so what is the meaning of the sprinkle irrigation in the sprinkle irrigation method we use sprinkles of different sizes that spray water directly on the plants okay so these water sprinkles pour the water directly onto the plants so this is what our sprinkle irrigation okay now students you must be thinking what is the advantage of the sprinkle irrigation what is the advantage of the drip irrigation so do you know that there are basically the two advantages of this irrigation what are the two advantages of the irrigation it provides enough water to the plants that means required amount of the water it is directly supplied to the water okay so extra wastage of the water is avoided here and the next important advantage of this irrigation technique is that it helps to save a lot of water initially what i told you because of the canals technique a lot of water is lost because of the evaporation so here there is no problem of evaporation as we are directly dropping down the water droplets and sprinkling the water directly onto the plants and that's why these are the two advantages of the irrigation technique i hope so students you all are noting down these points in your notebook okay so whenever you will attend the lecture make a habit keep notebook and pen ready with you so whatever things which are displayed here on your screen please note down in your notebook and make your own notes okay so what are the advantage of the irrigation students repeat after me advantages of the irrigation it provides enough water to the plants what is the second advantage of the irrigation it helps to save a lot of water so these are the two advantages of irrigation okay now whatever things we learn today now you understood in detail i hope so you remember all the things which we had learned shall we revise once again whatever we have done so what we had learned today the criteria of the good harvest so what are the criteria which are required to get the good harvest to the farmer so that farmer can get the good income so these are the four criteria which are required by the farmer to get the good harvest so what are those criteria repeat after me fertile land good quality of seeds fertilizers and availability of water these are the four criteria which are required by the farmer okay 
and most importantly what we learn today there are two modern method of irrigation so that the wastage of the water is avoided and the water is directly supplied to the plant so what are the two method of the irrigation repeat students after me drip irrigation and sprinkle irrigation so what is the use of the drip irrigation in drip irrigation we use the pipes with the hole so that the water will fall on the crops drop by drop okay and what is the meaning of the sprinkle irrigation the water will be sprinkled onto the crops directly like a fountain so fountain kind of sprinkle and the drip irrigation where drop by drop water is supplied to the crops okay so the next part of this topic we will see in the next lecture i hope so you understood the topic and the questions related to this session it is given in the youtube link below so do solve that okay see you in the next session bye take care